Hello, welcome to CBC. I'm Dr. Hassanov and you're watching Chesnagavaria Analytical Program. This time our guest is Hikmet Hajiyev, spokesman for the Azerbaijani Foreign Ministry. He will highlight several important issues ranging from Armenian provocations on the front line and the visit of the Foreign Minister Elmer Mamadyar to Berlin. Hello, Mr. Hajiyev. Hello. Recently, the military attaches of a number of foreign countries visited the front line zone. They were informed that the Armenian armed forces used prohibited ammunition against civilian Azerbaijani population. So, what reaction are you waiting from the international community in this regard? Uh, yes, uh, Azerbaijan National Agency for Mine Action have identified that Armenian armed forces used uh, white phosphor ammunition against a civilian target in Azerbaijan through the frontline area uh, in Tartar region of Azerbaijan, and this ammunition has been landed uh, to uh, field uh, near the Askipara village of Tartar region. And after the investigation, it has been found out that it's in a toxic uh, white phosphor uh, ammunition and its uh, effects could be extremely dangerous against the civilian population because it's cause for to intoxication. And in the meantime, it could also cause for severe and fires fire uh, around the civilian objects. And therefore, foreign ministry in uh, coordination with the Minister of Defense have arranged the visit of military attaches accredited in Baku to see the area and to inspect it. And uh, on also, in a way, uh, through uh, this uh, trip, we uh, intended to pass this message to the international community. And OSCE monitoring mission was also near uh, the Tartar region, and we have invited them as well. They have also uh, visited uh, the area and on the spot, and they have also seen that this is a dangerous uh, ammunition used by Armenian armed forces. And uh, luckily, it has been landed on the field area, that's not a habited area. And in general, uh, we'll document, and we have already, together with the ANAMA, have documented uh, with all facts, and it will be, it will be passed to the wider international community. And of course, it's not for the first time that Armenia used such kind of actions or such kind of ammunition against the civilian objects. In general, Armenian strategy is to uh, attack and target uh, civilian uh, Azerbaijani population who are living uh, adjacent to the frontline area. So what do you think, what needed to be taken by the international community, what measures needed to be taken in order to punish the Armenian side? Uh, unfortunately, so far we haven't seen uh, the uh, influential uh, or uh, effective uh, actions from the side of the international community to bring Armenia to the constructive uh, track so that uh, we can have an, a solution of the conflict as soon as possible. Armenia continues to ignore the calls of the international community and uh, currently, uh, as we see, Armenia occupies territories of Azerbaijan and it's a direct and flagrant violation of the Charter of the United Nations and four resolutions of the United Nations Security Council demand immediate and conditional role of Armenian forces from all occupied territories of Azerbaijan are more than 20 years and this situation remains as a standstill and Armenia uh, simply pays no heed to the call of the international community. And of course under such circumstances we see that uh, effective actions and particularly from the side of the OSC, Minsk Group, Kochea countries are not satisfactory enough to bring Armenia to the negotiation uh, table. And of course in such circumstances there should be addressed messages or addressed statements from the side of the international community and Armenia should be pressed to refrain from such kind of actions. But unfortunately in practice we don't see it. So, Mr. Hajib, with what do you associate the fact that the Armenian armed forces recently, with extreme bitterness, subjected peaceful Azerbaijan population to shelling? And isn't it clear that Armenia wants to inflict civilian casualties by attacking the civilian population? Exactly. And uh, since the uh, inception of this conflict is a strategy of Armenian armed forces to kill and to play a havoc as much as uh, possible around the civilian population. We have seen in Khojali and we have seen uh, in the ethnic cleansing of one million Azerbaijani population, civilian population from the occupied territories of Azerbaijan and also from the current territory of the Republic of Armenia. It's an exactly part of the military strategy and doctrine of the Republic of Armenia. And in general, uh, this targeting of civilian Azerbaijani population uh, brutal violation of the ceasefire regime has all been the case and uh, recently and even it has been further intensified and with further intensification and attacking of civilian population we have seen from the 2nd of April that because of the actions of Armenian side and in Tatar, Agdara and Horadis regions of Azerbaijan densely populated civilian uh, Azerbaijani population were target of heavy artillery and other uh, dangerous weapons including cluster munitions and we have seen recently white phosphor ammunition. This is an exact strategy of Armenia to uh, create a panic among the civilian Azerbaijani population and of course it's also related with the new military doctrine of Armenia and recently President, Defense Minister and Deputy Minister, Defense Minister of Armenia 
also openly and publicly uh, declared that Armenia switched from the static defense to uh, uh, to a deterrent strategy and deterrence in an understanding that they even thinking about occupying new territories around the occupied territories of Azerbaijan so that in their understanding uh, to ensure the security of this area. That's an exact strategy of Armenia and of course they are targeting civilian Azerbaijani population to create panic. But I have personally visited this area and I have also witnessed and also Azerbaijani media also business that the morale of Azerbaijani population in that area is extremely high and the recent visit of His Excellency Mr. President played an imp also additional important role to raising further uh, uh, spirits and morale of Azerbaijani population. They are in their places, they are continuing their living and they are continuing engaged in agricultural life of course, it's a difficult, but it's their land and they will stay there uh, forever. And of course, their demand is uh, liber uh, liberation of Azerbaijani territories from the occupation. After the April battles, the situation in the negotiation process over the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict seems to be deadlocked. And what do you think, what should be done in order to resume the negotiation? Uh, right after events, and uh, it needs to be also highlighted that uh, when Armenia started with provocative actions and attacking Azerbaijan's civilian population, on 3rd of April, uh, unilaterally, Azerbaijan side asked for the truth. Uh, but Armenian side uh, defied this fact and they can continued shelling Azerbaijan's population. And uh, since the 5th of April, uh, with the mediation of Russia and Chief of uh, Defense of Azerbaijan and Armenia, uh, make the uh, ceasefire arrangement that uh, they will hold the truth. And uh, afterwards, immediately, Azerbaijan made an open statement saying that we are ready, as we always said, that Azerbaijan uh, stands ready for a comprehensive political process to uh, guarantee lasting solution of the conflict. In a way, the roadmap of the conflict is clear, and the legal and political basis for resolution of the conflict is also clear, and it's well known from the international community. And it's also very well reflected in the updated Madrid principle. It, uh, in a way, could also play the role of roadmap for overall conflict settlement process. But unfortunately, Armenian side tries uh, to put uh, certain uh, preconditions to negotiation process. It's completely unacceptable. They there shouldn't be any preconditions and, uh, and uh, in the negotiation process the first and key issue is a withdrawal of Armenian armed force from the occupied territories. And international community knows it very well and actually Armenian side also knows it very well but in the comprehensive settlement process the first step should be withdrawal of us forces from the occupied territories. In a way we should stop the fact of occupation and aggression and afterwards they should be find solutions through the negotiation and through the constructive engagement to all other issues. Therefore, Armenia, knowing that it's a cornered uh, in this uh, negotiation process and uh, they are uh, with a provocative and controversial statements uh, trying to defer or evade attention from the core issues. Therefore, now it's the time for the international community and Minsk Group co-chairs to demand from Armenian side to sit on the negotiation table and to engage constructively in the negotiation process. And the events on the April 2nd, and you also rightly referred, once again demonstrated that illegal presence of Armenian armed forces is a source of instability and uh, insecurity in the region of South Caucasus. That's Azerbaijan always said that, and international community once again witnessed this fact. Mr. Hajiyev, in April, Baku hosted the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations Forum, which was a good platform for Azerbaijan to deliver its true voice to the international community. So what was the reaction of the forum participants to the Armenian provocations in April? Exactly. This uh, Alliance of Civilization 7th Baku Forum was a great success story. And uh, its uh, uh, reflection uh, of the international uh, community's confidence to Azerbaijan to host such an event and its uh, also a reflection of Azerbaijan's tradition uh, of multiculturalism. And we should start a little bit from the uh, beginning of this process as we have also seen that Armenian side tried through different provocations uh, as if they will uh, succeed uh, that this event will be postponed uh, in uh, its uh, holding in Azerbaijan or somehow they also try to affect adoption of the final Baku declaration. It was not the intention of Baku declaration or Baku Alliance of Civilization uh, forum to discuss Armenia-Azerbaijan conflict or any other conflict but in general its message was for peace cooperation, to living and good neighborly relations side by side. And inclusive uh, societies and or living in inclusive communities, uh, of course, it's uh, uh, related with the 
intrastate activities, but in the meantime, it's the main concept could also be applied interstate relations as well. States could also live one inclusive family and community within the region or beyond the region, but of course we should refrain from the facts of occupation, aggression, territorial claims, and on a peaceful manner and on a, uh, for the willing of goodwill cooperation, we can succeed on that. And of course, uh, as it also uh, highly stated uh, by the all delegations and representatives uh, participating in this forum, it was a big success. It has also been highlighted by the final uh, statement that was given by the United Nations, and it was also clear in the statement of the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki moon. How could you define the real difference between Armenia and Azerbaijan from a political point of view? What does Armenia bring to the region, and what does Azerbaijan? And actually, there is a big gap between these two countries. Sometimes it's incomparable to put together Armenia and Azerbaijan. Let's look at the facts and projects and the realities on the ground. What is Azerbaijan is bringing to the region? What's in Armenia? First, look at Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is building a network of cooperation. And this network of cooperation is a win-win situation for everybody. And from this project that Azerbaijan initiates and with the participation of Azerbaijan are uh, brought to the fruition, all uh, countries and people, uh, peoples of the region, even beyond the region, are taking benefit from that. Look at the Baku Tbilisi Jehan pipeline, Baku Tbilisi cars, Baku Tbilisi Erzurum. Now together with the Georgia, Azerbaijan and Turkey, we are building Baku Tbilisi cars. And its uh, repercussions are even going beyond those cars. It brings together uh, Central Asian countries and Europe together. And also look at the uh, top and TANA projects. Even uh, its uh, benefits are going far to Albania, Croatia, or uh, Balkan countries, and they will also get benefited. And look at the alliance of civilization. Azerbaijan brings together all the international community, and they are discussing important key issues. And before that, we had a Baku Games, but thousands of different athletes came together in Baku and they uh, struggled uh, in the sport field rather than some other fields. It was also a message of peace and cooperation to the international community. And look at the Azerbaijan investment. Azerbaijani tourists are going to some other countries and contributing to the economy of other countries. And, uh, and uh, regional projects, transport projects, tourism projects, and some other. And the list goes on. And now look at an Armenia. Armenia only <clears throat> brings destruction, war, and negative elements to uh, the regional process. In the meantime, Armenia, as if they are not actually contributing, instead, uh, uh, and not only contributing, but in the meantime, they are trying to affect the positive process in the, uh, that's going in the region. And Armenia has a territorial claim to all its neighbors. And Armenia, of course, occupied territories of Azerbaijan. And it's uh, simply the policy pursued by Armenia is a middle age uh, 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 ideology and uh, policy that's based on war, capturing the territories of neighboring countries, occupation and aggression. That's a real difference between Armenia and Azerbaijan. And of course, the international community also witnessed. And Mr. Spokesman, the last question is that, overall, how do you assess the visit of the Minister Mamadiar to Berlin? It was quite successful visit, and uh, Germany and Azerbaijan enjoys a bilateral relation, uh, very good bilateral relations since the early days of Azerbaijan's independence. And uh, last year, German foreign minister was in Azerbaijan, and we see, uh, and Azerbaijan foreign minister paid a working visit. And in the meantime, during the last two years. His Excellency Mr. President Ilham Aliyev visited uh, Germany and his visit uh, played an important role in promoting Azerbaijan and German relations qualitatively to a new level. And Foreign Minister's relation uh, was also quite uh, particular, uh, particular in the context that currently Germany is chairing OSCE and OSCE chairman in office uh, currently. And Germany also uh, highlighted in its priorities that uh, Germany tries, Berlin, official Berlin tries to contribute to resolution of the conflicts and including Armenia Azerbaijan conflict. And within context, uh, Foreign Minister uh, has a, a good uh, discussion with the uh, Chancellor's office, Chancellor Merkel's office, and he also had a meeting with the uh, uh, German Foreign Minister Steinmeier, and he briefed him about the uh, recent developments in the region, and including Armenian provocation against Azerbaijan starting in the April. And he also uh, communicated uh, uh, the will of Azerbaijan for comprehensive political settlement. And in the meantime, bilateral economic, trade, and investment relations between Azerbaijan and Germany have also been discussed, and uh, new economic and financial reform program is conducted in Azerbaijan and of course uh, German companies and German investment and German technology is also a quite interesting area. In general political, economic, trade, investment, tourism and some other related cooperation issues but 
of course, with a major focus on Armenia-Azerbaijan conflict and bearing in mind that Arme uh, Germany is current chairman, uh, chair in office of OSCE and also member of the Minsk Group. This, all of these issues have been discussed and it was quite a successful and fruitful visit. Thank you very much for your comprehensive reply to the questions. Thank you. Thanks for inviting. This was the spokesman for the Azerbaijan Foreign Minister Hikmet Hajiyev. It's all for today. Thank you for watching.